John Chastain, uh, your next speaker. Actually, I'm, I'm not going to talk that much about liquid solid separation itself, but I'm going to be looking at what some benefits are to a system that's, you might say, in the southeast, been deemed akin to the devil or something, uh, a treatment lagoon. So I really I want to narrow on that. We're not going to go into all that sort of thing. But so I got two purposes here. I, I do want to look at what the definition of a treatment lagoon is, how that's different from the storage, how we size those. I'm going to be using the ASAB standard. I mean, there's some other ways to do it, but that's what we use. And I'll give you a summary of some of the benefits that are particular to lagoon systems. I'll throw a little on storage there as well. Some big picture things I want to see. And uh, this was stated earlier, we've got many processes available, like particle size, density difference. We can, with the right combination of equipment, processes, chemicals, you can dial up basically what you want. Um, 10 to 90, 10 to 26 percent removal of solids or even higher. We've got simple screens, we've got presses, we've got a combination. Here's a combination of an in-flight screen and a screw press on swine manure. Uh, this has, it's, it's not fighted, it's actually flighted, but there's really three processes in one here, a fine screen with a spray, a screw press, and a flighted, incrine, flighted conveyor. So there's really three processes in one there. Sedimentation, weeping walls, many, many different old and new ideas there. And then even combining sedimentation with something like a press to improve, improve throughput, improve capacity of the system. So there's lots of options. So literally we can, and we can then don't use alum, we can use polymers, we can use all kinds of things. You know, we need proper dose, proper mixing, proper dilution, and the, the right money relative to what we're doing, the right economics. So let's first look at a storage. In South Carolina, especially in Minnesota where I used to work, in Iowa, people call this a lagoon. So that's a lagoon. Anything's a hole around the lagoon. <laughs> I know. Well, in, in Minnesota, we do know the difference. They know the difference. I know. But you'll still hear people say, oh, that's a lagoon. We had Canadian guys come down to a dairy conference we did when I lived in Minnesota. And they told me about their lagoon was made out of concrete. It was a round tank. But the point being is the storage is, is simply that. It's how much volume you want for manure and wasted water. You've got to put on your critical rain, your net rain for your critical months. You've got to have your 25-year, 24-hour, whatever freeboard in your state. Our state's up to two feet, foot freeboards now because of hurricanes. So that's not a lagoon. And we don't recommend them for recycled systems. Back when we started recycling, I went back and read through the original literature of the people that did it. They never really told us to do it. They told us we could get into trouble with ammonia, odor, pathogens, those kinds of things. So we have people that do do it, and we have people who have some consequences. Uh, the benefits of liquid solid cell separating for storage, we do help with pumping, you know, remove the particles, maybe either to agitate, pump, maybe run through a big gun. We don't get huge volume reductions. Typically in a slurry system like this, we wouldn't be gravity settling. We'd be using some sort of a simple separator. If it gives me 20% TS removal, I mean, excuse me, if it gives me 40% TS removal, it might give me about 20% volume reduction. So we don't get a huge amount. If you get some sedimentation with liquid systems, it'll be more. Helps with uh, getting particles out, clogged pipes and that kind of thing, and clogged nozzles. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm taking medicine that makes my mouth incredibly dry. So I'm not Marco Rubio, but I just got a dry mouth. So when I think about a manure treatment lagoon, I'm always looking, you know, when I talk to a producer, I, I can't look at it. I say, you got a plan. I start looking for things. I'm looking for, first of all, I look for an anaerobic treatment volume. It's going to have some manure storage in there, just like a storage. It's going to have all this. Uh, critical rain and everything else we talked about. And there's going to be a sludge storage option as well. This is kind of what, this is a breakdown what the ASAB standard looks at. Okay? So that's what I mean by a treatment lagoon. This is here, typically sized based on anaerobic treatment principles. Could be facultative, but we're going to stick with the standard, which is anaerobic. So the lagoon sizing, what I call the lagoon volume part, is a sum of whatever that manure volume is. I want to have 180 days, I want 365. The treatment volume that I need to provide to make the bugs work at the right rate. And then sludge storage. How long am I going to go before I take that stuff off the bottom? 
You know, in the old days, they sized them for 10 and 15 years sledge storages. Very expensive in today's dollars. On top of these, I'm counting the rest of it like depths. I mean, you can calculate volumes. Typically in the southeast, we don't collect runoff and put it in lagoon. We just get too much rain. 48 inches a year, that's just too much. So depths for the net rain, precipitation, plus runoff, whatever, the 25 year, 24 hours in the freeboard. These things go on top of any storage structure. So they're not unique to lagoons. That's why I put the lagoon volume separate. So in the southeast, I guess parts of Missouri, a typical lagoon system for a swine facility, you could make a little bigger barns and call it a dairy facility. It basically works like this. I mean, it's a flush or a use kit recharge to hydraulically remove manure from the buildings. Put in a treatment lagoon. I'm after, I'm going to be doing settling. I want biological breakdown. I want nitrogen loss. I'm after everything. I want to take that supernatant. It's got to be treated well enough so I can recycle it through my barn and not increase ammonia, not increase pathogens. In South Carolina, that means no more than five pounds of VS, all the solids per thousand cubic foot day. In Minnesota, it's no more than three. In Florida, it's no more than six. Okay? So to keep good supernatant quality to go back through. There's land application of surface water and, and there's periodic agitation and removal of the sludge. That's the way it's supposed to be. <clears throat> if it's well treated, um, well treated like lagoon water is what we need for manure removal. High loading rates basically make strong odors and strong high solids, high ammonia type waters that are not that great. We literally need well treated water of some sort, in this case lagoon water, to make recycle and flush systems we cycle flush system and pit resource systems will function properly the way we intend, not only from the mechanical part, but also from the, the, the animal husbandry part. And my recommendation is don't exceed the ASB standard on any of these. And so how do we implement this? One, I can plop a mechanical separator in there. That'll do some reduction. I can add chemicals. Add the polymers, get more, but I end up with some flow rate scenarios that I start slowing things down that may be detrimental. I can throw in gravity setting, settling and make a two-stage process just so I kind of take the, the, the chemicals and screening or pressing whatever offline, so to speak, to let supernatant go through. That speeds things up. <clears throat> I can put in a settling basin or settling pond. This is not uncommon. And uh, notice here, I can pretty much get closer. I'm pretty much saying I'm going to, if it's working and designed properly, I can eliminate sludge. And I can even take the selling idea and inject chemicals or other polymers, whatever, to even enhance that. So you can really come up with lots of options. So for manure storage volume, I'm not going to go through the numbers, but we're not looking at big volume reduction. So when I think about a practical design, if I'm going to start pulling out of that volume, I've got to know a lot about the system. Because we're looking at 10, 25%, somewhere in that range. So what I'm going to focus on really is the treatment and the sludge volumes. The treatment volume, this is the formula, the, essentially the formula of the ASAB standard. This is loading rate, pounds of ES per thousand cubic foot day. I don't have my thousand cubic foot in there, darn. <laughs> no, it's found another type of. Uh, this design loading rate obviously depends on climate. And I've kind of got a summary. Southern Minnesota is three, it's cold. Central Florida, hot, six. Where I live around, I'm between four and, five, four and a half and five in South Carolina. So those are the kinds of numbers we want to use. Well, so what's the benefit of liquid soil separation for a lagoon with regards to treatment volume? Well, guess what? Whatever percentage of VS removal, that's the key there. VS mass removal I get out of the system, I get that percent reduction in required treatment volume. Okay, it's very straightforward. But notice this. Let's say I was in southern Minnesota and I actually wanted to use them again. If I can get 40% VS removal, I got the same size lagoon as I would put without separation in South Carolina for swine. This is for swine. Okay? Look at it another way. My 40 here and I was in Kansas. Good grief. I might be in South Carolina with separation, where it's like I moved down here to Texas greatly increases, decreases the volume, um, increases my ability to get light loading rates. Makes it more economical. Even here in South Carolina, if I put 40%, that gives me to 600.6. It's like I got separation in Florida. So big impact 
when it looks to how much volume I got to build. It costs me bucks for every cubic foot I got to build. For dairy cattle, similar thing, I put this all red. Because basically, I got to take out 60% of the VS if I want to be about like swine manure. And literally, when I'm talking with producers, I showed them a system that took out 60% of their volatile solids. I said, I've just left to graze you. You're now worth pigs. I mean, literally, in terms of legume design, because there's so much material there. But still, the idea is that liquid solid separation lets us get stuff out that, and not have to go through a biological process to treat it. If I can remove it, it's actually slower degradable anyway. Uh, the sludge storage, these are some updated numbers in the new standard. There's also one for poultry, I didn't put it in. The dairy one didn't change, it's actually very conservative. The small one is much smaller than it used to be. But here's how that kind of looks. And I just put this per year. You have to decide how many years of sludge storage you want. Do you want one? Do you want five? Not many people build in 10 anymore. It's just too expensive. And also, if you looked at any of the case studies on renovating lagoons, they typically cost uh, two to five hundred thousand dollars even for moderately sized systems. Renovating a bunch of sludge in a lagoon is not very cost effective. So my idea was let's reduce it. So and the same thing on the TS removal efficiency. Whatever percent removal I get by the separator, I get that reduction in sludge if I just use the standard straight up as it is. So you can see dairy have a lot of sludge. In fact, it's been a long standing recommendation south in the southeast, at least in South Carolina, is that if you're going to put a lagoon on a dairy system, you got to have liquid solid separation. Um, that's, I mean, that's a 30, 40 year old recommendation. Not always followed, but that's definitely the case. Um, let me back up. One of our biggest problems with lagoons in South Carolina, North Carolina, a lot of places, even ones that were quote unquote designed according to the standard, nobody managed sludge. And what happens over time is that sludge builds up, you lose treatment volume. If you lose treatment volume, it becomes an uncovered liquid storage and it stinks. That's our number one bad thing in lagoons. So, yeah, I'm for things besides lagoons, but there's situations where maybe I can put a lagoon system, especially if I put this other treatment ahead of it, and make something that will sustain itself and be more cost effective, especially for medium sized producers. So, odor reduction. What about that? Well, there's been nice summaries on liquid solid separation done. Basically, if I look at just the manure, I really got to get out little particles, 0.25 millimeters or less, to really make an impact on odor generation. But, uh, so I gotta get some really high separ rate separation to get to that. And we technically can. We c it can be done. Um, however, VS loading rates have been shown, and this is some data from one of our old buddies, uh, Frank Humanick. They did a kind of a simple study where they varied loading rate, and this, I adapted this and made a chart from his, his study. And all he asked people to do is, can we tell some, smell something? the frequency of odor standing a certain distance from this container of manure. And so you see as we increase loading rate, this is treatment lagoon category. We're getting up to the storages here. But the frequency of occurrence. I'm not talking about a odor complaint event. I'm just talking like I can smell something. Odor frequency. And so actually in South Carolina, we have had a long standing state standard that says here's five but if you're in a sensitive area, decrease this by 20%, basically go down by 3.8. So if I want to do that, liquid solid separation up front can save a lot of earth movement money. So in summary, um, we can use this to significantly reduce our treatment sludge storage volumes. This directly correlates to cost, directly correlates to what it costs me in the future to manage sludge. That's a huge issue. Allows use of smaller structures to save money. Allows more economical use of lower loading rates to improve recycled water quality. That's key. We've had people recycle bad systems. Antibiotic costs go up. Ammonia in the building goes up. That's not good for, for pigs or cattle or anything. It helps with the ammonia and odor. Ammonia and odor in some ways, some of the, the organic end that we pull out with this isn't allowed to go to, to ammonia to keep it in the right condition. So it actually does reduce what comes off the top of the pond. I'm not going to go in great detail on that here. Um, it can allow anaerobic treatment lagoons to be considered in climates maybe where we have it or used more effectively in places like Missouri and Kansas where they have it. It still gets pretty cold. 
And we use it to remove a portion of the DS organic. I just said that. And this is the cost of sludge management to maintain lagoon function. We've, we've done examples and shown that traditional lagoons, the, the lifetime costs are very, very expensive. So I, there's no way I would ever recommend somebody put in a lagoon without putting some liquid solid separation, even if it's just to reduce sludge volume. And with that, I'm finished, I do believe. Questions? Questions for John, yes. Yes. Uh, you mentioned early on too, that you don't recommend using liquids out of a storage. Yes, please. <coughs> I'm sure Could you say a little more about why? I'll give you an example. We have a swine facility, and it was related to something the previous speaker said. They built the swine facility in a big row crop farm, and you want to produce pork, but he's looking at the manure value from fertilizer. And they decided to spend a little storage. In the first year or so, he's okay. About year three, I could go in and sample the pit, and I'd be 3% solids on the surface floor. Ammonia levels sky high, antibiotic cost went through the roof. It's just too strong. On dairy facilities, like that, we have some of these where basically the lagoon is converted to a salt, converted to a storage because there's no sludge management. All of a sudden, I'm taking very high pathogen water and putting down my freestyle area, and I care about mastitis. So it's really an animal health issue, the odor issue, and ammonia issue. It's just not sanitary. From the very beginning, it's in the old literature, just maybe small little paragraphs here or there. But it's, you're basically, you're playing a game, and the bio biology will usually bite you behind you eventually if, if you go against it. One more question. Yes? Isn't, isn't there, is there a point, John, where if you remove uh, enough solids, you'd be better off at that point buying for uh, and if you get that those really high rates, one a long time ago when Matias and I were playing with gravity settling in the uh, in flocculants, I went through a calculation. If I went through the best I know how to do, what how much volume I need, what would be the strength? And I could just start and basically my recommendation there would be yeah. have salt buildup. So the land apply further over here and plants were fresh so that we don't get high <coughs> salt. And high capacity and stuff like that. Yeah, you, know, you can theoretically do that. We're talking 90% of the That is, uh, yeah. I mean, if you look at some of the pictures where you use these flocks and palmers, you know, the ones that get the highest rate looks better than any of the units that can make you guys speed. Something else depends on how much rainfall you have. Yes. That's the, that's the challenge of the Air West. So much evaporation, we lose the lagoon. That's really what happens. I'll keep my good eye on you. Okay, let's thank John.